I don't know if you've noticed this, but there are times when religion seems to ignore the gift of uncertainty. In an effort to feel more stable, safe, and secure in the world, people come looking for answers. And although at times it seems like that's what religion is supposed to offer, I don't think that's actually the point. If we knew all of the answers, if we knew exactly what is possible and what would happen and what to do, we would never experience freedom, creativity, and growth. I believe we were created to have free will. So how would we experience the power and possibility of free will if we knew everything that was going to happen? As Julie said, this morning's passage is familiar to many of you as the wedding passage commonly read during wedding ceremonies as a reminder of the nature of love. But that's not really what it was written for. That's not why Paul wrote it to the community. Remember that we're in 1 Corinthians, so the beginning of the New Testament are the Gospels, and those are all about Jesus' life. And then we get to all these letters. And the letters are written to specific communities to encourage them or instruct them. And this is one of those letters. And so Paul is writing to the Corinthians to help direct them because perhaps their behavior has gone astray. So it's about love within a community, how a community should function. In his book, Gifts of the Dark Wood, Eric Elness says, quote, Paul understands that love thrives in uncertainty, not the kind of uncertainty that increases chaos, but the kind that develops trust." End quote. Love is more about how we interact with each other, which made me think of dancing. My concept of dancing is that it requires each partner to pay attention and to respond to the moment. If either person is too rigid in their understanding of how the dance should go, it won't be fluid. And it limits what the dancers can create together. John Ortberg observes in his book, Faith and Doubt, we all think we want certainty, but we don't. What we really want is trust wisely placed. Trust is better than certainty because it honors the freedom of persons and makes possible growth. When we claim we have certainty about God, we make God too small, too limited. We can't know all that. There's mystery. We can't have that certainty. And if you think about it, right, we're really clear, we're not God. So we can't be certain about God. All we can do is open ourselves to the mystery from a posture of trust, because trust is what allows us to move forward into the unknown. So I want you to think about, maybe you've done this, it might have been a while for some of us, It's been a while for me, so it may have been a while for you, but trust falls or trust walks. Do people know what I'm talking about? So a trust fall, right? You stand with your back to a group of people, and boy, do you cross your fingers and hope that when you fall backwards, those people catch you, right? But you can't see that they're gonna catch you. You don't know that they're gonna catch you, and the idea of the exercise is to let yourself go anyway. Or a trust walk is when you're blindfolded and someone leads you. And you have to trust that that person's not going to lead you to walk in front of a car or off of a curb or off of a cliff or into a tree, right? You have to trust that that person has good intentions, that they're leading you in a good direction. The point of gathering as a community of faith is not to gain certainty. 
It's to journey together to keep moving into the unknown. We engage in the actions of love together, actions that require us to be responsive and humble. We approach life from a posture of humility and not knowing with a conviction that love will guide us through. Now you may be able to jump on board with that idea, but often those kind of ideas sound good to me, but I have no idea how to do them. So I did a little research and I found this exercise, which I thought was helpful. In her book, Embracing Uncertainty, Susan Jeffers gives this suggestion. Replace the phrase, I hope, with I wonder. So for example, instead of saying something like, I hope I'll get the job, or I hope I'll get into the college, into the college I wanna get into, you'd say, I wonder if I'll get the job. I wonder if I'll get into that college. The rephrasing helps our mind accept the gifts of uncertainty. Instead of framing life as a series of successes and failures, a series of hopes fulfilled or denied, framing with wonder acknowledges that engaging with whatever comes our way is what life is about. We think we know what we want and need for our lives, but if we had that kind of control, we would never discover anything new, never grow. We would have no need for faith or trust. If you knew exactly where to go, why would you need anybody? We would have no need for community. Many of the sources I referred to this week gave this example. Think about the movies. Often movies have trailers, right? Little teasers of what will happen in the movie and they pique your interest and you decide that you want to find out what happens so you go to the movie you go to the movie precisely because you don't know what's going to happen and in fact if someone tells you what's going to happen ahead and you wanted to go it's spoiled susan's uh sharon's shaking her head right it's spoiled right considered to be a spoiler. What's the point? Why would I go if I already know what's going to happen? And yet we've decided we want our lives spoiled. We've decided that certainty is desirable. We want to know what will happen probably because it gives us a sense of safety. But yearning for certainty pulls us away from the abundance and expansiveness of God. We cut ourselves off from the life that is dynamic and possible when we want certainty. It's scary to open ourselves to the unknown, but that's why we have community. Community rooted in love. Community rooted in love are those people catching you when you fall backwards in the trust fall. It's those people leading you when you can't see where you're going. Community rooted in love is what provides us with enough sense of safety to let go of the need for certainty. And so as we begin the liturgical season of Lent, I invite you to embrace community. And when I say embrace community, I don't mean just engaging with community to support others who may be struggling. A lot of us love to do that, right? It feels good. I helped someone. I mean wholeheartedly accepting to, that to embrace community, you have to be willing to share your struggle as well. That's the only way it works. We have to be humble enough and courageous enough to share our lives with one another. And then we must be loving enough to receive one another in that sharing. Not to offer answers, advice, or certainty, which is so hard, isn't it? 
but to accompany one another as we discover, as we see, as we wonder what will happen next. To accompany one another in the wondering that opens us up to becoming. Amen.